Welcome to Blossoming by Grace and Grit. This is Wisdom 365, wisdom for every day of our lives. And as a celebration to the holiday season, today our devotional is called The Light Came Into the World. We're going to be reading from John 1 all the way to verse 32. Let us pray and let us read the Word of God. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father has made him known. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Messiah. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you a prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. Now the Pharisees who had sent, who had been sent, questioned him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied, but among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany, on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, a man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him, and I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man 
on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. Thank you so much, my Lord God, for your precious word, my Father. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for having sent your Son, Jesus, to the world, the light of the world. Light came into our world. Thank you so much, my God, that through that light, we are able to see. We are able to live in the darkness, be surrounded by darkness, but we, we have the light inside of us, oh God. We can be light to this dark world as he is light to the darkness of the world. My Lord, thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you so much for the gift that you gave, the gift of your one and only Son, the gift that you gave so that we could emulate the generosity by giving gifts to others. As we receive the biggest gift, the biggest treasure, the only gift worthwhile, the gift of salvation, the gift of eternal life, the gift of light. Lord God, thank you so much, my Father. In your Son, Jesus, we pray. My friends, this is a wonderful, wonderful season. It is a season that is filled with beautiful music, with love, generosity, grace, and even mercies, people that usually aren't very gracious during the holiday season, during this Christmas time, they become a little nicer. They become a little softer. And um, there is so much about God that remains unknowable to us. Human minds and language cannot capture the boundless realities about God and they will continue to amaze believers for all eternity. We look at Jesus and what he has done for us. And when we look and we gaze and we linger and we stay, we are changed. For the light of God, the light of Jesus, his one and only son has the power to transform the most lowly heart We look to Jesus as being the author and the finisher of our faith. We look to Jesus as our grace and our light, as perfect balance of grace, light, harmony, as the only one that could defy the laws of gravity, the only one that could replace the law of sin and death He came into the world to replace it with the law of the Spirit, for he is the only one authorized, qualified to baptize us with the Holy Spirit. For Jesus is the Son of God. We will better grasp who God is as we gaze intently at his son. And Jesus modeled God's compassion for broken and needy people. Jesus loved people in ways that changed them forever. We live in a world where people attempt to define God on their own terms. But God cannot be defined with the human understanding, with the mind. God can only be understood and loved and received with our hearts. 
My neighbor came knocking yesterday and she brought a container with sand and uh, she was explaining to me how every year in this during this time the 24th of December Christmas Eve this park this retirement community sets two of the containers on each side of the driveways with a a candle each on each, on the inside of the container in other words every house in this community lights their house with a container that that has a candle inside and the pathway is lit with a light every house in this community declares that the light of jesus lives in their home and it's beautiful to think how even people that don't really follow Jesus, that may not really read the Bible or really understand God, but they know that there is something pure and there is something good. They know that there is something that they cannot understand, but they know that it exists. Even unbelievers know that there is a light and his name is Jesus. Let us bring this light into our life this season. And let us not be concerned only with the gifts and with the giving and with the competition to give more or to give better. If we could only give the biggest gift ever, which is the gift of salvation, may that gift be in each and every one of us today, this season, so that we may give it freely to others. It is the gift that we have in earthen vessels, the gift of Jesus. Let us give Jesus freely as your one and only and best gift. My Lord God, thank you so much for this word. Thank you so much, my Father, for the beauty and the majesty of your word, the truth and the grace and harmony in perfect balance. Lord, I pray for each one of my subscribers. I pray for each person listening to the sound of my voice. I pray, my Father, that you will draw them and their family closer to you, that you may reveal yourself to them. And I pray, Father God, for every need, my Father, that they may have. I pray, Father God, for the blessings of provision, the blessings of grace, the blessings of light, my God. Wherever they may be found, my Father, however dark their life may be, I pray that the light of Jesus, my Father, will illuminate my God so brightly, my Lord God, that they cannot and will not look to the darkness of the world ever again. May the light of Jesus light and be lit in the heart of every one of my subscribers. In your precious name, we give you praise. We thank you, Lord God, for everything that you have done, everything that you are doing, everything that you are about to do. Thank you as we are going into our new season, my Father. Thank you so much. My friend, I remind you, I encourage you to play in the light, play in the sunshine, and dance in the rain, but most of all, I remind you to keep on smiling. God loves you so very, very much. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. The goodness of God is all around us. And if you want to receive 
and to be able to enjoy the goodness of God and all that it entails, the blessings, the peace, the joy. I invite you to receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. The goodness of God is available to you today. If you have not received Jesus, do not wait. Do it today. Do not wait to be perfect or rich. Do not wait to have a bigger house or a better job and have everything right in your life. Do it today, my friend. It is my honor to lead you in this prayer. And you might think that this is so simple. How can a simple prayer make something so important like receiving Jesus as my Lord and Savior? How can that be? Jesus made this process so easy. And yet it is so powerful. So follow me in this prayer. Father God, thank you so much for Jesus Christ, your son. I believe that he died and he bled and that he resurrected on the third day. I realize that I am a sinner and I ask you forgiveness for my sins. I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. Make something wonderful of my life as I promise to follow you from this day forward. Amen. My friend, if you've done that prayer, if you've said that prayer, there is a celebration in heaven as heaven celebrates with the repentance of every sinner. Congratulations. You are now part of the family of God.